Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. You know, last video about two weeks ago, we took a little brief hiatus last week uh, for President's Week. Uh, but the last Watch and Learn was about dive bezels. And one of the things that we discussed, and here's the, the SKX007, was that dive bezels only turn counterclockwise, generally, and not clockwise. And, and that's just so you can't uh, lengthen uh, your time below water you know, by accident. You can only shorten it, so it's a uh, it's a safety feature. Uh, but what makes what makes that happen? And um, we're gonna in today's video. I have a Seiko on the table that's got uh, a stuck bezel. It doesn't go either direction. So we're gonna rip the bezel off, and we're gonna see what makes it work. And uh, I'll show you how to pop it off, how to put it back on. You know how to adjust it if you want to adjust it because your zero mark isn't in the right area. So let's do a quick wrist check first. I'm um, wearing my Seiko 5 military, and a lot of you comment, and you, it's been repeated a few times, uh, do you always wear two watches? And the answer to that is yes, I generally do. I usually wear watches on two wrists, I'd say, I don't know, 80% of the time, 90% of the time. It's most of the day, most of the times I actually do. I love watches, and why not wear two of them? Uh, so I talked about this one in the last video, the, the little Seiko 5 military that I love, and this is a new acquisition for me, uh, Sarb 033 been selling it for a couple of years and decided to make one mine. Uh, I can kind of see what all the hubbub is about. I really like it. I didn't put it on leather yet. Uh, it's still on the stock bracelet, but man, that's a nice watch. Runs like a top. So anyway, let's get over to the table and check out uh, Seiko dive bezels and how to fix them. So in front of you here, I've got a couple of watches. So we're going to start with this one first. This is a 007 and the bezel on it is stuck as I mentioned. Doesn't spin clockwise, doesn't spin counterclockwise. And this is one of my test pieces uh, that I use for a lot of videos. I think gaskets popping out the back somewhere. Uh, it's got all sorts of issues this watch. But it works for, uh, it, we're, we're gonna fix the bezel today so we we'll do a little bit of repair on it. Uh, so the bezel doesn't spin. So what you need to do is remove the bezel. Now bezels are held on quite easier than people think they are. Uh, on a lot of watches uh, they just snap on, as is the case with this one. Some watches are held in with screws. Some watches, uh, through the geometry of the case, the crystal also holds them on. So you want to be sure what you're doing first before you remove the bezel because there's nothing worse than trying to take a bezel off a watch that you actually can't, and what you wind up doing is damaging the case and the bezel, and now you pretty much have a piece of garbage. So what we're going to do first well if we cared about this watch is we would layer we're going to use the lug as a banking surface we'd layer some kind of tape uh, electrical tape sailcloth tape something with some you know something with some meat to it so we protect the lug from uh the tool and take like a clam a clamming knife i call it you know this is for uh removing case backs from watches use a butter knife you don't want a serrated one but something that's smooth relatively thin you don't want to use a razor blade well, you don't need a razor blade uh, it just has to be thin enough to fit between the line where the bezel spins and the and the case, you know, that, that parting line right there. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold the case firmly. Now, I'm not using tape again because I really don't care about this one. And that's the difference between a pro and an amateur. Uh, when a pro does it, you'll never know anything was done. If an amateur does it, it's going to look like a shark ate it. So you're going to take the tool and you know, just work it. Ah, that actually went easier than I thought it would. You work it between the bezel and the case, and then once it's in there, a little gentle twist and it pops. So the bezel comes off and then here comes what they call the bezel spring. And if we look at the bezel spring, it's a flat piece of stamped metal, uh, probably spring steel, and it's got two little feet. I don't know if you can see it. One, one right here and then one on the other side. It's my glove is sticking to it. Right there. And those little feet stick into holes in the case. A hole here and a hole here. Those are like keying holes. And then I'm stuck again. On the other side, there's two little things that stick up, one here and one here. You notice that this one's a very gradual, shallow angle, and this one's very steep. The one in, in the one in the foreground is sticking up quite prominently, and that is most likely why the bezel was not spinning. It's probably getting stuck. So now these little leaf springs here that are sticking up engage on the back side of the bezel a series of steps. So these steps are you know cast into the bezel, 
and the spring fits in each one and then it pops out as you spin it. Now if you look, if we count the steps, let's, um, let's get a zero mark. So let's start at the 50. So 50's at the top, we'll flip it around and we'll just count approximately five steps. One, two, three, four, five, somewhere around here. I'll flip it over and you'll see I'm at 55. But this is a 120 click bezel. Well, it is but it's really the bezel spring that does that. These little leaf springs here are set half a minute apart. Uh, so when one admits, one is leaving uh, the detents. So basically they're kind of, they didn't change the design of the bezel if they went from a 60 to a 120. You just add another spring. So you get, you know, double the action. You could theoretically add a third one and make it a 180 click bezel, a fourth one and et cetera, et cetera. But then the tolerances really start to build up on you. So let's examine the bezel for a minute. So it's this piece of steel. It's got this black, what we call bezel insert. And you can really see the insert when you flip it over. You can see the insert right here at the bottom. It's sticking out just a little bit. And then the bezel itself has an O-ring on the inside. Can you see that right here? It runs around the inside. It's this grooved O-ring. And that is more or less what gives it resistance and what allows it to snap onto the case uh, when we put it back on. So a lot of times if people have a, a rough feeling bezel, they will lubricate that. Um, and then if people want to replace the bezel insert, they're replacing this. You can remove the insert while the bezel is still on the watch. Uh, it's a little bit easier to do it if it's off the watch because now you can just take it and you can just pull it off. The insert's held on with adhesive. A new one would go on with adhesive. The trick to putting a new one on is that you put it on you know, when the bezel is installed on the watch and then you can put it on so you can align your zero point perfectly. Now what you also can do, is, and people do this, if you're not happy with your bezel alignment, you can, these little springs here, well this one is defective as we said, this spring is sticking up way too tall and that's why the bezel wasn't spinning. Uh, what caused that? It could have been that, you know, someone tried to turn the bezel clockwise and it basically lifted the spring and cocked it so that it, um, it gave too much friction and wouldn't allow the bezel to spin anymore. But uh, what you could do is you could file these down a hair at a time until, and then put the bezel back on. And what you're basically doing is you're shifting where these springs hit the detents in the bezel. And hopefully you can get it to align a little bit better if, if it really bothers you. So I have here, these are available from Seiko USA. This is a new spring for a 007, 173, 175, whatever, you know, all the same watch. Uh, it's got the two vertical tabs there, and then it's got the two leaf springs. You can see them there. So if you're gonna repair this watch, what you're going to do now is you're going to simply lay the new spring in. You know, you're gonna put the little feet into the holes on the case. You're going to take your bezel, put it on, and you would push it on. Now, I, I don't know, I've seen people do this with their hands, with their thumbs. I don't, I do it with a tool. I picked up one of these on eBay uh, years ago. Let's see if I can bring it into the screenshot. It's a case press and they're very inexpensive. It comes with a whole bunch of plastic dies that you can use. And what you do is you put it in, you take the handle and there's two hands on the handle and you listen for the chomp. And hopefully that was the chomp of the bezel going on and not the glass cracking, because I've done that before as well. And there it is, the bezel's on, and there it goes, look at that. And it spins, doesn't spin clockwise, spins counterclockwise, perfect. And if you listen, when you do the 120 click, you do hear that each tick, maybe it's more of a feel, but each tick is different. Every other tick is the same, and the one after it is different, meaning that you know, you're only engaging one of the springs at one time. So anyway, that's how they've made 60-click you know, bezels into 120-click bezels. Really, there's not, much, there's not much magic going on, but you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's a 120-click bezel. Uh, I wanted to show you, I brought another Seiko into the picture. So you get another idea. So this is uh, the Sea Urchin SNZH55. I happen to love this watch. I love it in blue. Um, I think I already popped the bezel off. I did. It's the same design. Everything's exactly the same. It's a different size spring, I think. Uh, but what I really wanted to show you here was just 
just to get an appreciation for what Seiko has done to this bezel. Do you, can you see that they've coated it with, um, I don't know if it's glass or acrylic, but it's this uh, clear coating over the bezel, and it makes the bezel super thick. You can really see that. I mean, they, they did all this work on this nice, beautiful bezel. That's what makes the bezel so glossy. I think this is one of the standouts of the watch is the bezel. Like I said before, companies use different techniques. This is one of the more common ones with the leaf springs. I've seen springs that are almost um, that are circular springs, and they wrap around the case, um, and it engages a, a ratchet on the side of the bezel instead. Uh, it, it could be any method, but you know, there's always some kind of a method for you know making it turn clockwise in one direction. But it's the same thing again if you wanted to adjust the um, where the zero lies you could trim down those fingers a little bit you don't want to take off too much because then you're really changing the design um, if you need to lube it you can lube it um, and you put it on then you'd use a, a press again or your fingers if you have really strong fingers I do not and I don't want to break my thumbs off um, and that will put the bezel back on but that's about it I mean there's not much more to it you know like I said you, you do want to do a little homework first and Try to figure out how the bezel on your watch does work before you go to rip it off. Uh, but this should give you a general overview of the unidirectional bezel and how it operates. So this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com with Watch and Learn, showing you the unidirectional bezel and the bezel spring and how they all operate. If you like this video, please like it now. If you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please do so. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.